TVO. Tom, it's wonderful having you here in Witchwood Park at number three, right in my own back garden. Never thought it would happen. It is a, it's grand uh, being able to just sit down and talk about some of the things that we're interested in. I was interested, you see, in the fact that you were a Southerner, Tom, and that uh, this relation to an oral tradition is a great advantage to a literary man. In the 20th century, it's very remarkable that all the best writing has come out of Ireland or the American South uh, because of this close relation that the English language has to the spoken word in those areas. And uh, this, too, seems to have something to do with the existence of jazz and rock as art forms, that without an oral tradition of corporate public address, there, this kind of music would not occur. I'm sure a lot of it also has to do with preaching. Well, there the, again uh, is a public address system. Because there's, I really can't think of any part of the country where preaching um, among both black and white uh, preachers is, uh, has had such prominence and where people get so f fulsome in their expression, whether it's the very stilted kind of speech that the Southern Episcopalian <coughs> minister uh, uses with the, the uh expressions, uh, for, uh, forgive us uh, our uh, trespasses uh, and, uh, and these very well, intentional, they, they, it's, it's kind of an English uh, well, those, mannerism. Those hesitations and those intervals are actually very involving. It makes the audience just hang on the next phrase. It's like a stutterer who keeps you just on the ropes waiting for him to form another word. This, this whole idea of an oral tradition uh, certainly did come back with the Beat Generation. When you got, in fact, I think it was the main contribution to people like Allen Ginsberg and Gregory Corso and uh, Ferling Getty made was to, just, uh -huh. just to break up the academic portrait which had become so strong after the Second World War.